Today's date is the 11th of September 2021. Um, hello there, this is a tarot reading for Gladys Berejiklian, the New South Wales Premier, and that is New South Wales, Australia. Um, so I'm going to be looking at the indications for what is coming up in Gladys's life um, in the next little while, so in the next few months to 12 months. So I'll just shuffle the cards. There are um, eight reversed cards in this deck, which I have chosen at random. Um, so they may come out in all likelihood. Um, some of them will come out. So we'll see. Um, I'm going to start. I, I just shuffled three times and I that's how, how many times I do like to shuffle. So I'm putting the first card out. It is a reverse card and it is the reverse devil card. Um, that is the theme card for the whole reading. So it does represent a process that has already started. So it's um, anchored in the past, but it um, represents a process or part of a process that's unfolding into the future. And the devil reversed represents uh, overcoming a, an influence that is testing the person. So it's a testing influence and it's evolutionary in nature and it is to see how strong we are, to see whether we will stay on track or whether we will um, overcome that influence that is represented by the devil. Uh, it often involves responsibilities um, and issues of authority and, and making sure that we um, only assume responsibilities that are in line with our higher purpose, our soul purpose. So the first few cards that I put out are in the past and are going to give us some background for what's coming up in the future. So the second card is the five of discs called worry in this deck uh, and it does represent anxiety about a situation, it's a physical situation, um, so that could involve work, you know, uh, circumstances at work, um, or it could involve financial uh, issues, or anything mundane in a person's life that is causing some anxiety. It doesn't mean that there's actually anything to worry about. Uh, it's a natural psychological response to a changing situation. Um, let's see what's next. Usually this card will also be in the past. It is the Knight of Swords. I'll call him the King of Swords, um, just to be consistent with most other tarot decks. Um, the King of Swords is an advisor usually, so it's somebody who is advising Gladys, um, giving her his point of view, probably around her own age, or if younger than her in a significant way, um, then he would be someone in a position of authority that is an advisor, somebody that is telling her um, or advising her of the best course of action. <clears throat> okay, we have the Five of Swords next, which links to that King of Swords. Five of Swords, it represents a negative environment um, or an environment where people aren't getting along with each other. There's backstabbing or, or a lot of bad feelings um, and usually um, a person wants to get out of that situation, get away from those people um, and become involved with people who have a more positive um, influence in the person's life. 
Now that King of Swords <clears throat> is somehow connected to the the negative energy of that Five of Swords. Let's see what's next. Two of Cups, love. Okay, so there's a a personal connection here that uh, is very strong, um, and there may be security issues involved in the relationship as well, dependency, codependency. Sometimes it's a family relationship. Um, I know there is an issue for Gladys at the moment um, in regard to her relationship with another minister. Um, that There's some controversy swirling around that. And it's evident uh, in her um, astrological influences as well uh, in the transits that she's currently going through very much focused on her relationships so I'm going to assume that that um, king of swords is the person that she is involved with on an emotional level now usually the fifth card in the row is around about now so it's usually about uh, it's in the present so we're going to be entering into the future here in these next few cards let's see what we got the fool the divine fool um, so that represents a uh, the jumping into a brand new situation um, so it's 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 a new beginning but it's something different you know it's like something that hasn't been experienced before and therefore can create some anxiety and jumping out of one's comfort zone you know into a brand new environment a new experience um, it's exciting but also uh, potentially um, quite nerve-wracking now the Fool card is the Uranus card in the Tarot deck and therefore it corresponds with Uranus transits um, that Gladys is going through and this can help us determine the timing of when that Fool card is going to come into focus in her life and I notice that she has transiting Chiron opposing her natal Uranus in her chart at the moment um, and the next exact alignment of that transit is on the 7th of December 2021 um, but before that she has transiting Uranus opposing Venus in her chart as well as I mentioned Uranus is the Fool card in the tarot deck so there's a good chance that the timing of that Fool card is going to be around that 8th of November 2021 uh, which is probably going to coincide with a significant development in her relationships. Um, I think that she's going to be very disappointed with someone, somebody that she's been involved with uh, and is involved with at the, at the moment um, and I'd say there's going to be a bit of a clash of values and possibly an issue around shared resources uh, as a result of, of this transit. Now getting back to the tarot um, we're, we're up to the Fool card which I've just been talking about and so we'll see what the next card is it is the Queen of Cups, um, possibly referring to Gladys herself uh, and linking back to the um, Two of Cups, the Love card. So I would say that this is going to involve Gladys's, or well, Gladys in, in her relationship mode. So I think she's going to be very, focusing very much on um, how she feels about her relationships with certain people uh, at that point but this is something new so this is something new that she's jumping into or out of 
um, because of the full card beside her there as the Queen of Cups. Let's see what's next. The star. So the star represents um, a group of people, an organization or institution. Um, presumably in this case it represents the government and um, where Gladys fits in to the government, the um, state government this is. Um, so I would say this is somehow connected with her relationship with the King of Swords um, and the change that's going to occur that is being initiated there through the Fool card um, and probably that Uranus transit that she's going through um, and it looks like she's going to be making a change that involves not only the King of Swords but also a group of people that she belongs to um, possibly that both of them are a part of. Let's see what's next. The Ten of Swords. So the Ten of Swords represents the breaking down of an old way of thinking, an old mindset. Um, this relates back to that King of Swords again. Um, and the Five of Swords, which is that negative environment. Somebody is going through a process of disillusionment. Now I'd say it's probably Gladys who is experiencing it in relation to the King of Swords, linking those swords together. Um, so this is what occurs before the new perspective dawns, the new idea dawns, the, the idea that enables a major change in her understanding and a decision that can be made based on a new perspective. Um, so let's see what's next. The Eight of Wands. So she's going to be um, doing a lot of networking with the Eight of Wands. So she's going to be um, discussing things with a few different people. She's trying to achieve a goal as um, as a result of those or, or based on the feedback that she's receiving from the various people that she's discussing this issue with. Um, so there is a um, yeah, a bit of networking, a bit of research uh, and discussion and possibly debate going on there. Let's see what's next. The Ten of Discs, the Wealth Card. So it looks like it does involve the issue of finances um, or resources. I mentioned that in regard to her astrology, the Uranus opposition to her, her natal Venus also suggests a pretty significant development between her and another person um, involving a larger group though um, because Uranus does represent groups of people um, and particularly involving one person because of her Venus in Scorpio probably the King of Swords <clears throat> the King of Swords um, who is the third car in this card in this row let's see what's next the Empress um, the Empress represents the Divine Mother the the divine providence of the universe, the universe providing. It's the Venus card in the tarot deck. Um, so it's linked to that Venus point in, in her chart as well, her Venus in Scorpio. She could be represented by the Empress. Um, she is a woman in charge. She's the Premier of the state of New South Wales in Australia. Uh, and as the Empress, she is somebody who is um, sharing resources. She's bestowing resources um, upon other people. And so that somehow is going to become an issue by the look of it um, there. We've got a reverse card coming out next. The reversed King of Discs. 
as I mentioned, I call the knights kings in this desk, uh, in in this deck. Um, so the the king of discs is connected with the wealth card, the ten of discs, and also the worry card. You know, back at the beginning, near the beginning of this row, um, where there's a lot of anxiety about a particular situation. It looks like it does involve resources, money, wealth, um, and it involves the King of Swords. Um, and I'd say this King of Discs is probably the same person as the King of Swords uh, in the future. Um, and, well, being, uh, um, being reversed, he is not in a very good place. He's, he's making a big change. There is a big change occurring in his life. Um, it does involve his physical or financial situation. Um, and he's losing or he's letting go of something of value there. Something's ending. He's being prevented from doing something. The Ten of Wands. Sometimes that represents prison. Um, obviously, the bars, you know, allude to that um, to that situation. Uh, it does represent a sort of a cage um, physically or metaphorically uh, and uh, feeling blocked, you know, trapped or blocked um, or reaching a, a dead end uh, and having to um, stop going in a certain direction and being forced to stop by um, whatever that blockage or that barrier represents. I'd say we've probably reached the end of that row. So I'll end the uh, reading there.